Hi, and thank you for choosing Prophecy. Within the collaboration of MV Tech and Prophecy, we've released MetaVision Acquisition Interface, allowing you to record and acquire data from event-based Prophecy cameras in the MV Tech Halcon software. In this video, we're going to see how to install the MetaVision Acquisition Interface and how to get started with data acquisition and processing. The interface can be downloaded from the Prophecy Knowledge Center. So let's open the Knowledge Center and see the documentation page. On this page, we give a brief description of the MetaVision interface, where we describe the installation procedure, the main features, and the steps to start. As the main feature, the interface enables asynchronous data acquisition. The data can be acquired in two main formats, frames, 2D images that can be acquired with the Grab Image Async operator and can be processed with 2D image processing operators, or the buffer of CD events in the XYPT format acquired with the Grab Data Async operator and can be processed as a 3D model using time as a depth axis. Let's focus on the frame format at first. Frames can be generated in two ways, the CD frame or the time surface. CD frames are images generated from change detector events, on and off, accumulated over a given period of time. Please note that the generated CD frames are different from the frames acquired from a classical frame-based camera, and therefore the results of applying 2D operators on such CD frames can differ from the results obtained on frame-based data. CD frame format is not the best format to demonstrate advantages of event-based technology. Time surface is another image format that contains information about the event history inside the 2D image. Time surface is generated from the last event timestamp per pixel for both on and off events. The screenshot here is generated using the JET lookup table, and therefore the red pixels show the most recent activities, and the dark blue pixels show the oldest activities, like the background that didn't change for a while. The yellowish or greenish colors show the previous positions of the moving objects, like a hand here. Let's switch to the second main format, that is, buffer of events in XYPT format. Data in this format can be used to generate a 3D object model using time as a depth axis. We recommend you to look at the examples using already recorded raw data to better understand how event-based data could look like in this format and how to use it. Now let's install the interface. The interface requires the MetaVision SDK to be installed. For this, you'll need to sign up and fill out the form. There is documentation on the SDK installation available. However, you do not need to go over every step and install all the dependencies if you solely wish to use the Halcon interface only. Once the SDK and the Halcon software are installed, you can go download the interface. Currently, the interface is available for Windows and Linux Ubuntu. Once downloaded, you need to extract the archive. Then, depending on your operating system, here we are on Linux Ubuntu, you will see the following folders. Doc for documentation, examples, lib or bin folders with binaries, a few lookup tables with the prophecy color schemes. The documentation here is an HTML format that can be opened in the browser, so let's take a look at it. Now let's install the interface. For this, we need to copy all of the binaries from our lib or bin folders to the Halcon root folder. In our case, we can copy it here. Finally, let's start the HDevelop XL. Please note that only HDevelop XL supports the event data in XYPT format. We are going to acquire data from the live prophecy camera like our EVK4 here using the GUI at first and then using the provided examples. So firstly, we'll plug our camera into a USB 3 port on the computer. Then we'll open the new image acquisition interface on the menu. We select the MetaVision interface. Then we press the Connect button and the Live button to start to stream the data. We see the event-based data rendered as a CD frame data format. We stop the data acquisition and we can check the available parameters. All of the parameters are grouped here into the acquisition parameters, sensor biases, regions of interest, and digital filters. We'll start with the acquisition control parameters. As the main parameters, for the frame data you can define the FPS and the accumulation time, 
and for the XYPT data, you can define the time slice duration. Let's change the accumulation time to one millisecond. The CD frames are visibly changed, and we have much fewer pixels activated in a single CD frame. Here we see the beginner parameters mode, and we can change this over to the guru parameters to allow for further manipulation of the sensor. We'll change the data format to the time surface, and then we will increase back the accumulation time to get more events in a single time surface image. We'll then set the lookup table to the jet one we used earlier to better see the most recent events and the oldest events. Now let's see the examples that are delivered together with the interface for use with a live camera. We'll start by using the most basic CD frame example as it allows us to stream data from a live camera as we did with the previous GUI. And we can achieve CD frames from this data. We can also use a similar approach for the time surface format. Now let's switch to another example showing how to stream buffers of events in the XYPT format and how to generate 3D from this data using the time as a depth axis. We'll move our hand in front of the camera and we can generate a 3D model from the acquired event data. It's not the best example of the XYPT data because we didn't tune the sensor biases here and there. For a better understanding of the XYP2 format, we recommend to fully tune the sensor or utilize the recorded data from our MetaVision data sets. Now let's use some examples allowing us to read some data from RAW files. We'll use the hand underscore spinner dot RAW file that comes with our MetaVision data sets. The MetaVision datasets can be downloaded from our docs.prophecy.ai page. We need to go to the Recordings and Datasets menu, and we'll see the available raw files with their descriptions and screenshots. For the first usage, we suggest you start with the data from the spinner, the hand spinner, laser, and falling particles raw files. We download them and store them in a folder labeled EB next to our examples. Now we'll go back to the example and run it. We can see the XYPT data from the hand spinner rendered as a 3D model. The duration of the time slice is quite long here. It's roughly 50 milliseconds. Let's switch the raw file to the spinner raw file, and we'll see the data from a rotating dot. We can also check the laser raw data file. And the default accumulation time is also here quite long, so we'll shorten it down to one millisecond. Now let's switch to the XYPT polarity filtering example. By default, it uses the hand spinner raw file that we've used previously. In this example, we create two separate 3D models, one model from on events and one from off, and then we show them by different colors, yellow and red. Let's switch the data file to the spinner raw file. Now let's quickly check the code, and here's the way to filter the on events and generate a 3D model from them. And here is the filtering of off events and the generation of a 3D model from that. Both 3D models can be visualized here. Now we will see two more examples that are a bit more complex and include some data processing. The first example is the noise removal example. We'll use the hand spinner raw file here, and we'll apply two methods of noise filtering. Method one is based on the approximate number of neighbors right within a certain distance, and method two is based on the distance of the nth nearest point. At first, we can see the original data visualized as a 3D model. Then we'll show the filtered data with the yellow color and the noise with the red color. Here's the result of the first noise filtering method using the number of nearest neighbors. And here's the result of the second filtering method using the nth nearest point. Let's see the same example on the spinner raw data. 
Here's the original data. Now the data filtered with the first method. Again, the yellow color is used for the filtered data and the red for the removed noise. And then the second me filtering method. And we can see here that the first method actually provides better results for this specific data set, unlike the previous example. Now let's change over to the XYPT segmentation example, where we can see and learn how to segment data. We'll use the raw file with the following particles with a very short time slice duration of roughly 500 microseconds. We'll run the example, and we can see the following particles as a 3D model over time. Let's take a look at the code. At first, we can transform the x, y, p, t uh, individual points into a 3D model. Then we can visualize the original data as a 3D model. Now let's remove some of the noise if required. Then let's look for the connected components. And we'll remove all of these small connected components based on the number of points in the overall large component. The results look very promising. So in conclusion, we've learned about MetaVision acquisition interface for the MVTech Halcon software. We've seen how to install the interface, how to get started with data streaming, what kinds of examples are provided to us, and how to use them. We encourage you to try data processing on files from the MetaVision data sets or directly using your own data from the recordings from your own Prophecy EVK4. Please note that the frame format, or the CD frames, provided by this interface is drastically different from the frames acquired from a classical frame-based camera. And therefore, the results of applying 2D operators on these frames can differ from those results that you see on frame-based data. The XYPT format is also used to generate 3D models, but is also quite different from 3D data acquired from a typical 3D camera point cloud. The event point cloud is much sparser and not regular. If there is no motion, then no data is acquired. When working with the live data stream, please also note that you will need to tune some sensor parameters to obtain the best possible data and therefore the best processing results. We look forward to your feedback, we look forward to your testing results, and we hope to see you in future videos. Thank you.